Hey guys, so I'm going to be showing you how to bring particles that you made Houdini into Maya. Um, these programs can be a little daunting. I know they were for me. Um, I'm still pretty new with everything, but this was something I was wondering how to do, and I just wanted to show everyone else how to do it. So, I'm going to be talking as I go through this, so it should be pretty easy to follow. So I'm going to click Sphere right here. Hit Enter. And then I'm going to drag the sphere up. A little higher than that, though. Then click on Emit Particles. And then hit Enter. And now that sphere is a particle emitter. So all we want to do now is double click on the Particle Fluid node. And this DOP import is what's responsible for uh, the particle data. So that's kind of what we want to get out. So I'm going to hit Tab. ROP, then go to ROP output driver and enter. Drop that down. Click on the little hang tab and then connect the two. So now from here, I just want to change the scene settings a little bit because I don't want all of this data. I'm just going to make it into 20 frames. I'm just going to play it once. So let's simulate our, our particles here. Alright, it's easy enough. So now we just want to get this data out. So we're going to cache it using that ROP node that we just made. So we want to do 1 to 20, not just 1. So we're going to change it from render current frame to render frame range. We're going to click on this once because we can't edit it right now. I can type in anything and hit enter. It's going to bring it back. So I'll click on that. Type in 20 because we want to go to frame 20. And we could leave this, but I'm just going to hit 1 and do enter. So it's going from frame 1 to 20. I'm going to put this in an easier access, to, an easier spot to access. So I'm going to put this on my desktop. And what we want to do is we want to use this file name here. We don't want to just type in test or something like that. Because if we don't, if we don't use this file name, or we don't use something using this proper uh, file name, so, I don't know dollar signs and stuff like that, then it will just keep overwriting itself. We just were to type in a uh, generic file name or something like that. So hit accept. And now we're going to save these to disk. So if everything went well, and it did, we have every frame of particle data now. So now we want to bring that into Maya. So all we have to do here is make a file node. So I hit tab, type in file, drop that down, double click on that, and the file that we want is what we just made. So it's in that test folder on the desktop that I had made earlier. Hit accept. And now we should have that data in Houdini. And we do. So we would be done, but we have to change this right here because Maya's going to look in this side of a shorthanded uh, area to find our files. Houdini knows where this is, but Maya's going to look somewhere different. So what we have to do, we can type this in manually, but I'm just going to go to the directory. Um, desktop test and file. So now the file is set up, the directory is set up correctly, so Maya will know where to look for the particles. So I was running into this issue. So We're going to delete everything. We don't have to do this, but I'm just going to do it for the sake of it, just to show you that Houdini is only having those 20 frames of particles now from this file node that we made. Now all we have to do is drop it in a subnet, which is by clicking on that and then clicking on this package right clicking on it and then creating a digital asset from that. So let us make a desktop file for this. I'm just gonna name it Adam. Adam file. Accept. And we should be able to just hit apply and accept and it should grab only the file that we need because the scene's pretty simple so we should only grab these particles. So let's go into Maya. Click on the Houdini engine, load the asset, let's drag this over, click on that atom file that I just made, open it up, and there we go, we have our particles, perfect. So now we can mesh these in Maya if we want, or mess around with them, and we don't just have to, you know, bring a, a mesh from Houdini into Maya. So we have a little more freedom with what we want to do. So I hope this helps someone figure out how to do this, but uh, that's it, see ya.